Greetings fellow mass spectrometrists. In this installment, I want to speak about the new feature that I have quoted in uh, Mine Expert, and that feature is related to the ISOSPEC software that was published in uh, Analytical Chemistry in 2017 by Lackey and collaborators. And what's interesting with this um, library is that um, it performs isotopic cluster calculations very, very uh, quickly. And um, it's also interesting because it's been published under a free software license. And also, not only is it a library for C++, it is also a library for Python and R, GNU R. So it's really a very, very interesting software package. The point is that if you go to the examples and you look at the examples, what you'll see is that to configure the library for your own use, you need to write C or C++. And this is not very easy. So I decided in my software, in the Mine Expert software, to code a graphical user interface that allows to make use of ISOSPEC in a user-friendly way. So let's start my expert. So let's check that this version is the proper one. Uh, let's go here, about, and it's version 581, perfect. It's the latest as of yesterday. In order to use uh, uh, ISOSPEC, you need to go to the Utilities menu and then select Isotopic Cluster Calculator. And what you get is this uh, window here. And you see there's two panes. The left pane here configures values that are useful whatever your calculation. And the right pane, you can redimension it like this. There's a splitter here. The right pane is a tab widget that has four pages. The first page displays the atomic configuration as loaded directly from the ISOSPEC library, and this is totally static. You can't configure anything here. The second pane is for using this kind of data, but as a personal configuration uh, data set. We'll see how to get it. And then we have a manual configuration that I will show uh, in the next uh, step. Finally, the ISOSPEC results is a simple text widget where the results are going to be, are going to be uh, published. So let's start uh, with the ISOSPEC standard uh, static data that are exactly mimicking the static data that are in lib ISOSPEC++. In order to check this, I want to start my other program that is called Mass Expert, also shipped with the MS Expert Suite uh, software project. And Mass Expert is a simulator. If we open here, open sample sequence of the expert edit module, we can select uh, horse myoglobin. OK. And we see that by default, it is singly protonated. And that's fine. Let's ask for the uh, compositions by clicking the chemistry menu and then the determined compositions menu. All we have to do is make sure that whole sequence is selected and that we click on the elemental push button. And now we know that our composition is this one, copy. Remember, this is the composition for the monoprotonated, monoprotonated protein. And we did control C, right? There we are. So now it's pasted in the clipboard. We can paste it here in the formula line edit widget. This is the line edit widget. And that's the formula for which we want to compute 
the isotopic cluster. In order to do this, we need a fine description of the chemical elements we will need carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur. We need to have a fine description of these chemical elements and we know that each element is actually a, a concept. A chemical element is a concept. The object you have in the hand when you have uh, matter in the hand is atoms. The hydrogen element, chemical element, is, is actually represented in nature with two, uh, two isotopes. A light isotope with a mass rough, roughly one has a probability roughly one also. It's the most abundant. And the hydrogen, the isotope that is the heaviest one, which has a mass two, that is plus a neutron, has an abundance of almost one thousandth. Same for carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and so on, right? So these are the data that are read from the lib isospec plus plus library. All we need to do is check that all the elements of the of the formula have an index. For example, if I wanted to protonate another time this protein, I would add a hydrogen. But this wouldn't work because hydrogen there needs to have an index. It needs to have a count. Even if we add a single element atom. Remove it. So remember this. Next, we, we just click Run. Isospec computes the, the values, and you, you see that we switched to the Isospec results tab, and these are the results. This is not a mass spectrum. These are the, the, the isotopic cluster peaks and troids, that is pairs pairs of a mz value and and the corresponding probability it's important to understand this now what governs the number of such isotopic peak uh, uh, isotopic cluster peaks well this value here this value represents the maximum cumulative probability that we ask isospec to come to while calculating the combinatorics of the isotopes. So what we did here is we asked isospec to compute all the, the various isotopic com uh, combinations that are possible up to 99% of the whole set of combinations that would occur practically in nature. And as you've seen, this computation has been very quick. Now, the fact that these are not mass peaks, but mass peaks and troids, makes this, this kind of data unplotable. So it's not going to look like a mass spectrum. In order to do that, I've written a peak shaper feature in MineExpert. And all we need to do is to send these mass peaks and troids to the peak shaper feature by clicking to peak shaper and this set of mass peaks and troids has been copied identically here and now what we do is that we configure the way we shape the peaks we say that the instrument we have for the analysis has a resolving power of 45,000 
then we say that the charge we could have said here that also the charge of the molecule we are of this molecule we are working on is one and the charge agent needs to be of course taken into account in the formula and this is what we did we computed this elemental composition formula for the monoprotonated apomyoglobin protein so of these pro of these protons here one is for the charging of the uh, of, of the protein right and then what we say is that we want a Gaussian shape for the peaks and then we click run it computes the various uh, peak shapes and at the end what it does is to display the true spectrum and all we have to do is to click display mass spectrum and that mass spectrum now, now shows in the mass spectrum window there we are so this is the most the the the, the easiest way to compute isotopic clusters with unmodified uh, atomic uh, uh, isotopic abundances you just rely on the data that have been encoded in the lib isospec plus plus library what if you had for example an experiment in which you label a peptide uh, with uh, uh, the uh, for example C13 and nitrogen 14 let's go through such an example uh, let's open mass expert again and search for this time something I have in my own uh, in my own stuff this for example this is a, a, a polymer a piece of polymer that makes the uh, bacterial wall uh, and and it's something a collaborator works on now it's modified on its end terminus and it has modifications so we click on modifications here and uh, we also want to take into account the left modif that is this modification here it's a small sugar uh, moiety and this small molecule we now ask it's monoprotonated here that's fine and we ask for this glycopeptide to produce its elemental composition exactly like we did before elemental composition now we have it done right and let's put this in here and start again the computation there we are so we can remove the apomyoglobin protein here and now we have that piece of bacterial wall okay let's say now that we have a very efficient labeling of our carbons and our nitrogens with C13 as a most abundant isotope and with N15 as the most abundant nitrogen isotope for this what we could do is send the useful you see that I'm clicking here in the border to select rows and we will make and now I click on control to continue selecting here so let's start from the top and then select in the order the various we need sulfur let's put phosphorus sulfur and this is done so we have all the atoms we need right and now that we have selected them let's save them to a table file that we can call um, ISO ISO spec uh, standard 
standard um, bio elements natural abundances for example okay so now we can save them it's done let's go somewhere and open that file in for example let's go to uh, to another place or let's open here uh, LibreOffice for example let's see if that works labor or or for example um, LibreOffice calc but I don't know how it works this one let's see if it works fine open that file so it must be this one open so it's a tab separated values and you see that effectively it has separated the lines there in columns so it's fine and we have it and now we have the probabilities here we have the probabilities for carbon and we know that the probability for carbon 12 is almost one but now I want to replace that value to 0, 0, 002 because it's 2%. The labeling is by setting the isotope 13 to almost 1, 0, 098. And exactly the same for nitrogen, 0, 0, 002. No, I'm sorry. Yes, 0, 0, 002 for the light one and 0.98 for the heavy one and this is a double labeling this is very efficient it's a labeling that occurs while the bacteria grow in their medium and we save this all we have to do is to save it if we go back now to the let's put the, that window down if we now go to the isospec standard user data, not the static one, this is unmodifiable. This is the data that we have read from the lib isospec++ library. It's only for um, easy computations, no modification of the uh, abundances. But if we go here, we have a load table from file button here. We can go there and reload. In fact, I have, I have uh, overwritten this. It's bad. Anyway, we now have it. We should have changed the name, right? And now if we look at carbon, you see that the, the, most, uh, the lightest one, instead of being the most abundant, is the least abundant. And the heaviest isotope is now the most abundant. So apparently this worked. Let's go back here and we remember that this is the mass of the glycopeptide. Let's control this. And we now set it there because each of the tabs has its own formula. We'll see how this works out. And this is now the way we want to work with our new configuration. The uh, formula we run to Peak Shaper. We run the peak shaper with the same uh, configuration as above, and now we do show the mass spectrum. If we lock, if we lock X range, we can move now, and they will put the traces locked, and we see that we have indeed an isotopic cluster that is decreasing to the left and not to the right because the most abundant isotopes for carbon and nitrogen as are the heavier ones and then we decrease we have a bit of probably this is oxygen and hydrogen there so you see you can configure the abundances in in a file as we did with LibreOffice where is it uh, this one you can configure that then you save it as a uh, tab separated value. You load it in the isospec standard user data and not static data, user data, and you perform your calculation. Now there is a third way that is you can actually 
configure manually the formula and the isotopes. For this, you start with an element. And you have here a group box that contains an element. An element is a carbon. How many carbons do we have? 37. 37, sorry. 37 here, carbons. And then we have the isotopes. And we will run the configuration exactly as here to show that it is a similar way of doing. But for this, we need to copy a number of data. Let's go to the, uh, the, the 12 isotope here. So I need to go there and then copy, paste. We add, you see, we add here, we add a row. This is an isotope frame, right? This is an isotope frame. So let's go on with the configuration of the carbon. Uh, the isotope 2, that is the heavy one. I'm sorry, there. What did I do? Fine. And then this one, manual configuration here. Perfect. And we did it for carbon. Let's add a new element here, up. And now hydrogen, for example. How many hydrogen atoms do we have? We have 64, right? Let's configure this, 64. And now let's go on. Hydrogen here, the lightest isotope. All these are males that I am receiving. Uh, let's select this properly. I don't know why it does what. Then I'm not very good at clicking and clicking and clicking Control C. There, new isotope, the heavy one this time. So it's this one. And then here, the abundance. There, a new element that is oxygen, of course. How many oxygen atoms? We have 21. So let's set 21. And go, now we know we have three isotopes. Let's create the three isotopes widget. And now oxygen, first one. It's t it's it's a bit it's a bit pedestrian, but then we'll see that we can save this configuration, and this is good. And then here the second isotope, the mass first, the abundance. Okay. And the third one, the mass first, and now the abundance, control C, there. And finally, we have to add a new element that go that's going to be the nitrogen. How many nitrogen atoms do we have here? Uh, we have seven, right? So let's put this here. Uh, and we know we have two, we can close this, we have two uh, isotopes. The first here, let's start with the lightest isotope. Okay, then the heavier isotope, there, here. And finally, the abundance of that isotope. I guess we now have all the configuration set. C-H-O-N. Do we need something else? C-H-O-N. Right. Let's now start. And you see, the formula is now included in these values. So 3764. 3764. 
7 and 21. So 7 for nitrogen and 21 for oxygen. It's fine. Let's run that, that stuff. And again, shape the peaks. And now display them as spectrum. And they should be absolutely uh, overlapping. So if we now zoom on this view here, we can see that they are absolutely super so over overlapping one to each other. If I select the last trace here and I hit the H button that is hide, the, the trace here will be hidden from this view. Let's try H and you see we only get the, the blue one. So I will reinstate with H again and hide the blue one and we will have only the yellow one. And you see they are perfectly, perfectly superimposable. So what we demonstrated here is that manual configuration like this is exactly equivalent to a configuration like this. The only difference is with the, that with this way, we could create a new chemical element with a different set of isotopes. For example, if you do uh, labeling with a C14, for example, or something totally new, you would create a new element and set all the um, interesting uh, isotope values here. You know that you can save this configuration. We can do this. And for example, this is going to be isospec, not isospec no more standard but manual manual uh, manual config uh, uh, c13 uh, and fo 15 for example if you save this you can remove all these widgets and recall the configuration uh, if we do this the manual configuration th these are two distinct formats so the manual configuration here it regenerates all the widgets set properly be aware that if you do that load configuration again it will stack the widgets it's not going to replace them see now you have two sets of these widgets 37 here and again 37 here and a total new set. Don't, don't forget when you load the configuration to first remove all the items. Load config to start fresh. There we are. And we can run a computation because the formula is intrinsically made by specifying each atom count. And each atom, of course, is represented with isotopes with mass and abundance, mass and abundance. So this way of doing is equivalent to this one, but this way of doing is more flexible. In the in the lib in the lib isospec uh, examples, there is an example where they use uh, glucose, and they label it with um, C14, C14, and it's it's cleverly described. So I encourage you to, to go there in the, uh, in the examples here and check for the explanations. Remember, this is GitHub, uh, the isospec projects by, by the uh, Matteo Lacchi uh, people. And uh, you go in the isospec examples. And uh, these examples also exist in the, um, come on. These examples also exist in the Python and R um, scripts. It's very slow because I am acquiring the video, so it's horribly slow. And 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 now the the Python, you see radio labeling. Look, if you are um, more proficient with Python, you can read this. And same with uh, same with uh, with R. Uh, let's go to the R radio labeling it's it's well done it's it's a very good work 
So um, this is how Mayan Expert helps you to uh, model, to simulate uh, um, labeling experiments. Thank you for watching and uh, don't forget to look at all the other videos of, um, uh, that I did of the features uh, of uh, Mayan Expert. And also don't forget to go there I write it down here msexpertsuite.org this is the place where you find the user manuals and these are very detailed user manuals there's the HTML version and there's a PDF version that is very 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 elegant this is the uh, the PDF version that you can uh, that you you can uh, look at and it works with the uh, so the, 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 the experiments we did is documented here, calculating isotopic clusters with either, either, either spec. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.